Today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow option traders can make by selling put and covered call options. I will show you three of my favorite option trades from last month as well as talk you through the strategy that we use for each one of those trades. This will help you see how you can use these same strategies to consistently generate monthly cash flow in your account. Here you see every option trade we did last month in August. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. I will discuss the option credit spread trade that we did in Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. I will also talk you through the Canadian National Railway, ticker symbol CNI put option trade that we did as well as the leaps and poor man's cover call trades that we did in Disney. As you can see here, it was a very busy month. We let quite a few of the put option positions that we sold in July be assigned to us and turn them into covered calls. As you can see here, in all, we let that happen with six positions. The net out-of-pocket cost to us was $55,459. A couple other big transactions I want to make sure that I point out to you are a couple that did not go our way. After researching extensively our positions and the overall political environment with Baidu and Alibaba, we decided to exit both of those positions. It did create a loss for us, but based on what's going on in China and the overall shoving match going on between the US and China, I no longer feel comfortable having money invested in these two companies. And it appears that I'm not alone, as you can see here from this poll that I put out that shows your feelings about Baidu. So we closed out those two positions and immediately put that cash back to work in two new poor man covered call positions. And my Microsoft and Apple. These are both companies that I use every day. So we felt good about our odds of getting our cash back for the losses that we had took on those other positions. To get an accurate picture of exactly how much cash we made by selling options, we need to do a little bit of math here. Here's the breakdown. At the bottom of the sheet here, you see that our net cash flow from buying and selling options, which includes selling Baidu and Alibaba positions, as well as opening the poor man covered call positions in Microsoft and Apple. As a result of all that, not including the stock that we bought, we pocketed a net cash of $6,466. Data fees cost us $32.75. We received $292.65 in dividends from Campbell's Soup and Realty Income. I'd like to give you a little more insight into exactly how much we've pocketed if we didn't enter and exit those four positions that we mentioned earlier. As you can see, the result is that we generated cash of $16,462. Taking the loss on Alibaba and Baidu positions definitely hurt our cash flow. But we had generated so much cash flow during the month that we were able to absorb those losses and still pocket over $6,000. We could have decided to stay in those positions and just ride it out to see what happened, but I just no longer felt comfortable with them. So I wanted to take the cash and put it somewhere else where I felt a lot more comfortable. If you run the return on the $16,462, it equates to right at 23.5% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. However, if you back out the cost of the four positions, it equates to a 9.6 annualized cash on cash return or return on capital. Obviously, that's not a return that we're happy with, but we are happy with the overall $16,462 in cash we generated. If you're curious about the return on margin, if you calculate the return on the $150,041 in margin requirement, it equates to a 129% annualized return on margin. The first trade I want to talk through are the put options that we sold in the railway company. If you're like me, you like trains. So it's nice to trade in a company that I've been watching for quite a long time, but haven't been able to do a trade in it. On top of that, it paid us an awesome return. Here you see the chart of Canadian National Railway on the day that we sold our put options. I started closely watching Canadian National Railway when it came down and retreated to $100 here after it rebounded and stayed above both the green 50 and red tuna moving average for almost two weeks. I also noticed that for the most part since June, there had been pretty decent buying pressure in Canadian National. Over on the weekly chart, notice that it was resting right at the green 50 moving average. It had been hanging out in that area for about two months. I also saw that over the previous year, that green 50 moving average had served as nice support for Canadian National. Down the volume section on the weekly chart, I also noticed that over the previous couple months, there had been nice buying pressure. After this nice big down day, two days before we did this trade, with Canadian National still finding support at the green 50 and red tuna moving average on the daily chart, I took advantage of this opportunity to sell some put options in it. Here you see the trade we did. On August 10th, with Canadian National trading right at $108 per share, we sold the September 17th $105 put options. For that, we were paid $3.60 per share. Well, how did it turn out? Here you see that several days after we sold these put options, Canadian National actually went down. And for a couple of days, it pushed below our short 105 strike price. But then buying pressure took over. And as you can see, the railway went from 105 up to $127 per share by September 3rd. At that point, those put options that we've been paid $3.60 for were now only worth $0.21 cents per share. 
So he bought them back to close it out two weeks early and pocketed a profit over $1,000 on this position. We then took that capital and about an hour later, as you can see here, put it right back to work by selling a new put option and Air Products ticker symbol APD. But since that trade happened in September, that's probably a story for another time. The next trade I want to talk about is a bullish put option credit position that we did in Amazon. Amazon is such an expensive stock that it's hard to trade options in it. I've even looked at doing a poor man's cover call on Amazon. The problem is that as you can see here, if we go out to the June of 23 expiration options, even if we just buy an at the money leaps option, which would be right now, it'd be right about 3,520, that leaps call option would still cost us $550 per share. If you multiply that times the 100 shares in that one contract, it costs us $50,000 just to buy a leaps at the money option. So forget about doing a poor man's cover call for now. Let's just use credit spreads to generate cash flow in this awesome company. Here's what Amazon's chart looked like on the day that we entered this trade. First, notice on this left chart, the daily chart, the Amazon had gapped down almost a week before from around 3,600 per share down to 3,300 per share. So it had dropped a little over 8%. However, notice where the white arrow is that seemed to be finding support just above this red 200 moving average. That was coupled with, if you notice down the volume section where the purple arrow is, notice that the downward selling pressure appeared to be dissipating. In fact, the day before we did this trade, it was a pretty nice up day. Over on the weekly chart, things look promising as well. I noticed that since April of 2020, the green 50 moving average has served as nice support for Amazon. And now I found that it was right back at this green 50 moving average. These charts made me feel good that a lot of the big downward move was most likely over for Amazon. But I still want to give myself some room to be wrong and still win. And the biggest reason for that is that when you trade a credit spread, you just need to remember that if you're wrong and the stock goes against you, if you were to go past your long protective put option, then you can actually lose the entire amount that you have at risk. As you're going to see in this position, we're risking $30,000. As you can see here, where the yellow line is, that's where the 2950 put option strike price is that we sold. In addition to Amazon having already dropped 8% the week earlier, we we'll have to drop an additional 10.5% plus within the next six and a half weeks in order to reach our short strike price. As long as it didn't do that, that $9 per share or $900 was ours. Well, how did it turn out? Yesterday with this position only worth $75 and just under two weeks left until expiration day, we decided to go ahead and close it out early. In all, we pocketed $822.19. And since we closed the position out over a week and a half early, we used that capital to sell some new put options in Walgreens and Edison, which is a utility company. One of the things I want to point out about this Amazon trade is that we had been looking for an opportunity to trade options in Amazon for quite a while. But we hadn't done a trade because we just hadn't seen anything where the risk and the reward lined up with good support. However, after the big drop, once Amazon settled down with the premium still being nice and high, and us being able to generate an awesome return, even if we were wrong, by 10% and we still get 100% win, well, we just had to take advantage of this trade. We don't do credit spreads very often. The reason is that I don't like the potential 100% loss in those positions if the stock were to fly past our long protective strike put option. But as you can see here, in certain situations, I do like credit spreads and the returns can be awesome. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Next, I want to share with you the trades that we did and where we're at overall in our poor man's covered call and leaps position in Disney. This is a position I've been talking about ever since the big drop in the market over a year and a half ago. We made another very exciting and very profitable trade in this position in August. Here are the details of the trade that we did. As you can see here, after the market closed on August 12th, Disney was going to be announcing earnings. The options that we had sold the month before expired in just over a week. Combined, they didn't have much time value left. So I didn't want to risk that a surprise earnings announcement might mess up our role for the next week. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've been working to roll this near-term call option up and out with the goal of eventually letting it expire worthless. Then I plan to get to work on the January of 22 short call option, which is at the 150 strike price. It's going to be close because we only have about five months until that option expires in January. So more than likely, I have to roll that January of 2022 150 call option up and out to give me more time. But overall, that's my goal. I want to show you how to use options to generate cash flow in a position and at the same time manipulate it so you can walk away with an awesome return without any repercussions from the short options that win against you. 
I can't make any promises here, but that's my goal with this Disney position. We want to walk away with all the cash and appreciation benefit without having to give up any of our own cash. Even though the short call option that we've been selling, they pretty much went deep in the money on us. Here's the trade that we did. Starting up top on August 12th, we bought to close the 160 call option that was expiring in about a week for $17.06 per share. We also bought to close that same expiration day, August 20th, 170 put option. That cost us $1.17 per share. Simultaneously, we rolled the call option strike price up from $160 to $165 and out to October. For that, we were paid $15.12. Finally, all in the same trade, we sold to open that same put option strike price of $170 at the same October 15th expiration day and receive $4.63 per share. So we were able to roll the short call option strike price up by $5 and still pocket $1.52 per share. Here you see Disney's chart up until today. At the base of the error, that's August 12th, when we rolled the strike price of the short call option up by $5. Today, Disney closed right at $185 per share. What's interesting is that it's reaching an area of resistance that it found the day after we did our trade, which is right around $188. So will it have enough strength to break through? And how do we handle this trade next month? Stay tuned in. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades similar to the three I spoke about in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks that we use to manipulate short option positions and put the odds of winning in our favor while still pocketing awesome cash flow returns, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.